Welcome to Hoovy's Gar Wait a minute. Wrong channel. Welcome back to the Car Wizard Shop. We're going to take a look at another EuroAsian Bob special. Let's take a look at this thing. So you guys just recently saw a video of the six cars that came from out of state. We got swamped all of a sudden. And one of them we've already got the okay. We're doing timing belt, water pump, oxygen sensor, rear brakes, quite a bit. Not enough for a full length video really, but Long Beach has already tore into this scene, got the water pump back together, timing belt, everything, and he's doing very good. And I'll let you guys take a look at what he's got going on. Did you have fun doing the timing belt? Yes, I like working on these cars. But you're probably not enjoying the Kansas weather right now, are you? It's a bit chilly. Yeah, you're probably not riding your Unagi around either. It's like 12 degrees outside. I need heat in the morning. Yeah, it's really, really cold out. A lot colder than Long Beach. Did it ever get that cold in Long Beach? Not even close. Not even close? No. Wow. So you've got this thing almost back together. Everything's looking good. The timing marks look perfect. But this is the original belt. I don't even see any markings on it. But it doesn't actually look bad. But I know that with only 60 some thousand miles, this is the original Lexus Toyota belt and we're not gonna take any chances. I'll let Long Beach get back to getting this thing back together. It needs to go to a lift next, but that is the update on the SC430. The timing belt and water pump is almost done. We're about halfway done with this job and I'll let you get back to it, Long Beach. Thank you. All right. Let's see how long this thing is, Mrs. Wizard. Okay, give me a minute. Nineteen and a half feet. That is a really long car. Almost 20 feet long. Nineteen and a half feet of 1975 goodness. Every time Euroasian Bob comes up with one of these immaculate perfect cars, I think that's really sweet and it's probably going to be a while before he finds another one. And then a week later I get some pictures on my phone. Oh, I found another one. By the way, I found three of them. And if I was looking in the market for one of these, I w it would take me six months or a year to find one. I don't know how he does it, but if you're in the market for stuff like this, you definitely want to check out EuroAsian Auto Inc. In the description below, there's a link. This is the type of stuff he's getting into lately. This is a 1975 Mercury Grand Marquis. No, it's not a Lincoln, it's not a Cadillac, it's not a Plymouth or a Chrysler. This is ultra rare. There's lots of Lincolns from the 70s like this. But the Grand Marquis with all kinds of features and things that this car has on it and only 17,600 miles. Obviously by the years it has expired its factory warranty but according to the miles it hasn't even reached halfway. It's amazing guys. I want to show you guys the size of this car and the length of this car. It is amazing. Let's take a look. So although this looks like a Lincoln it is the Ford family of cars. It is a Mercury. It does similarly look like a Lincoln emblem with the cross and everything, but then it's, it has the wreath around it and the castellation on top that indicates it's a Mercury. You guys remember the one I had I called Grandma, and it was also a Grand Marquis. It was tan colored like desert sand, but this is back when the cars were huge. This is a huge Grand Marquis. It has headlights with headlight covers that work perfectly. Look at the chrome on the bumper, guys. It's almost like a mirror. This one has cornering lights. So when you turn on your turn signal, it illuminates this corner section over here. Because it's such a long car, you probably need to see up ahead. Look at those beautiful turbine. Although they are hubcaps, it has a very nice look to it with the Grand Marquis symbol or Mercury symbol. I'm not sure what that is. I've not seen one of these before, guys. Look how long this thing is. And while we're walking the length of this, look how shiny and perfect the paint is. It's very shiny and glossy. Here we have the wheel well covers. It looks very nice and classy. And up here, most cars of this era, the vinyl top or leather top or whatever that is, 
it's absolutely destroyed. Or they have rust bubbles all along the glass. Back here will be all bulging with rust bubbles. Oh yeah, your 67 Cadillac had that. Mm -hmm. This one has none of that. Look across, you can see the grain of the vinyl, perfectly flat, clean. No cracks, no damage. I mean, it really looks brand new. That's not just talking it up. It really does look brand new. Here's our parcel shelf, which is usually faded or destroyed by now on these cars. This one still retains its nice red color and what looks to be six by nine speakers in the back. I want to show you guys something on the fuel filler here. It even still has the plastic cover. This is crazy, guys. Unleaded gasoline only, because we were doing away with leaded gas back then. This is a little reminder plaque. And it's still there. Usually this would be broke by now. And there's where we feel it, obviously. So that's still intact. And again, we have a shiny rear back bumper. All the lenses are crack free. They are not faded. All in great shape. Even this leather or vinyl, whatever that is, is in great shape. Let's take a look inside the trunk. Man, that's a big old emblem. We have some of the clear vinyl floor mats like they had back in the day. Obviously it's aged by now. It's kind of a brown tan color just from age. That can be put back in the car if you want it, if you buy it. All the carpet and everything is intact. It's really clean back here. Let's move this out of the way. I've got it kind of disconnected so we could take a peek. We can see there's our spare. It does have some air in it, luckily. There's the jack, jack foot. The jack's behind the spare back there. All the stickers are intact, jack usage and stowage. This thing is really a time capsule. And again on this side, we'll see a repeat of the other side. Flawless paint, no dents, no rust bubbles, no scratches. Even the rocker molding along there is all intact. No rust, nothing going on like that. Nice, clean, shiny mirrors. And we ride back at the front. Which is bigger, Mrs. Wizard, the hood or the trunk? I think the hood. Yeah, the hood does look a little longer. I do think it's missing one thing, though. What's Wizard. that? It's something you really, we don't have to be too worried about, but no curb feelers. No, it doesn't have curb feelers. That was like usually an add-on accessory for people, usually. It was, but it was very common during that time. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get the giant hood on this thing opened. So I mentioned that this was a really special model and it has features that really most Grand Marquis didn't have. And one of them is a key lockable hood latch release right here. That's not aftermarket, guys. That was from Ford Motor Company. That's a Mercury feature. You put your key in there and lock it. I can't open it right now. I'll have to unlock the hood latch. There we go. Look at that beast. It is a four barrel, which was what the 4V stands for. Big block 460. The paint looks shiny still, like it's fresh out of the factory. Even has the stamps, OK, 949. There's the emissions label, neon green. All of our metal components are still somewhat shiny, even the cap to the master cylinder. I've ridden in this thing and it, it drives and rides like a new car. Look at this on the belt. So this is original belts, I believe, from 1975. And I can tell that because this isn't painted on numbers. These are embossed. They're actually stamped into the rubber with a Motorcraft number. So we might be going with some new belts just because of age, but they actually don't look bad. Look at the skinny little belt, Mrs. Wizard, for the smog pump. Wow. 
It's amazing it's still there and still running. Yep, still has all the smog equipment, still operational on it. All the hoses and everything are all intact. There's really no serious leaks going on. There is one issue that's going to be fixed while it's here, and it is the clutch on the compressor is locked up. You can see that the little disc is off to the side here. So we will have to get that looked at and get it repaired. So I'm going to close this gargantuan hood and we'll let Mrs. Husser give you guys a tour of the beautiful interior. Just wait till you guys see it. It's really nice. Okay, ladies and gents, look at that. It does, it really says 17,000 miles up there on that dash. That is amazing. And you know, it can't be 117,000 miles because this thing is like showroom quality. After, you know, 46 years, that dash is in perfect shape. Now we do have a couple of tones in here. We've got this kind of a maroon red. We've got our lovely plastic wood grain from the plastic wood trees on the planet. And then we also have the ivory leather of the leather sofa that I am now sitting on. Yes, this feels like a Barca lounger from the 70s. As we move on to the dash though, we can see we have some a few vintage classic uh, elements. We have a lovely 8-track player. So they haven't replaced the radio. It is the original radio from the car. Notice here, it isn't dual climate control like we're used to today. It is single climate control, but you set the temperature and you set where it blows and it does the rest for you. Obviously, we can also turn it off and on. As we adjust to the seats, as I said, it is a sofa in here. Look at that, look how plush there. Look at the little rivets on the actual bottom part of the seat. Look how much they indent in. That tells you just how soft these seats are. And again, we have leather accents on the door. We have our lovely emblem there as well. One thing that is present on both doors is the leather closing strap. So many times those have broken through the years, but this has been driven so little that they're in pristine shape. There is some yellowing on the plastic molding on the doors, but that is to be expected after 46 years of plastic. And here is our back seat, and look how plush this is. It doesn't look like anybody has ever sat back there, and who knows, maybe they didn't. The only, again, the minor, minor thing that is different here from when it rolled off the showroom floor is that yellowing plastic. But otherwise, everything is just pristine. Look at the headliner perfect, nothing sagging, no marks, no fingerprints, absolutely amazing. As we look here at the dash, you can see that there are some, you know, controls that let us see what actually what we're doing, you know, is the engine running, your, your seat belt's on, you know, not as annoying as we have today that, you know, beeps and bings at you if you don't have you or your passenger or someone in the car doesn't have the seats on, but they do give a light there. We do have the controls for the alternator, and I'm not sure what the brake is going to illuminate and when it's going to illuminate, but there is a light for it. And of course, it tells you if your high beams are on, if your blinker is on. So if great grandpa is driving this, it's at least going to be showing him blink, blink, blink as he's driving down the road with his left blinker on. Again, the steering wheel is just a very thin, delicate bar. does have the horn not on the ring this time, but on the center cross as well. And it looks like we have just some simple cruise control features there as well. Otherwise, this thing is so perfect in here. Let's see what it looks like underneath. As usual, we'll start up here. Here's our giant condenser. Looks like somebody pushed their finger in there at one time years ago. There's our radiator. Everything's nice and dry there. Here's our big oil pan and our oil filter. And here's what I believe to be an EVAP canister. It's kind of a strange place to put one, but it works. Let's go ahead and check our wheels out brakes are very thick. Sway bar link is good. Our shock is not blown out. Nothing loose. We'll go to this side. 
little piece of grass. Good brakes. Trayvon link is good. Nothing loose there. Shock is nice and dry. Steering gearbox. Most of these are weeping pretty heavily by now at this age, but this one is bone dry. Here's our steering linkage. Everything looks good there. There is a tiny bit of seepage here. We'll take a look and see what it could be. Probably something simple, hopefully. But it's actually not leaking very bad at all, really. Here's our transmission pan. It's like an undercoating or something on this car. You can see like a black colored undercoating. Here's the rear of the transmission. Some sort of a harmonic absorption device, I think. Nice shoe joints, original exhaust. Shoe joints good there. There's our four nine inch rear end. It appears to be a nine inch anyway. I think it is. Those are very heavy duty, very strong. Everything looks good on this brake. Shock is not blown out. Muffler's intact here. I do see a little bit of seepage on this brake, so that'll be something that we need to take care of as well. Very likely do a set of back brake wheel cylinders and shoes. That's expected on a car this age, though. I'm not surprised. Springs are in good shape. And here's a track bar, a track panhard bar, I think it's what it's called. Keeps everything nice and straight from side to side. Here's our fuel tank. And a huge trunk. I haven't seen any rusts, Mrs. Wizard. No, no, the only odd thing I think I've noticed was right over here, I don't think I've seen too many cars with spider webs. Yeah, that's just from where it was parked and sitting. Spiders were crawling on it. Which for this car is good because it kept the miles off it. Yep. These are usually destroyed by now, rotted out, rusted, especially on the inside, but not on this car. It's all intact. We'll check out the tires and we'll get this thing on the ground. Let's see here. Got some Cooper trendsetters on it. Let's see if we can find a date code. 35th week, 2021. So they're not even a year old. It's got very good tires on it. Let's get this thing on the ground. So we did find a few items on this cream puff. We need to look at the air conditioner compressor, the belts, and also we've seen a brake leak on the rear left tire. We'll get those things solved and this thing will be ready for sale. That's why it's up here to be gone through and checked over before it's offered for sale. And as you guys know, you're not going to buy this for three grand in a broken PlayStation. And you're also not going to buy it for a couple of dirt bikes that have been apart for 10 years sitting in boxes in trade. That's just not going to work. This is going to be very expensive to buy this car. Contact EuroAsian Bob if you want to find out the price or any questions about it. We're going to get these things fixed and get this thing ready for his lot, and then you guys can contact him if you're interested in buying this. It is absolutely beautiful. Several of the guys in the shop have actually walked by. They didn't even know that it was coming, and they walk by, and they do a double take, and they're like, oh my god, that thing's beautiful, especially Crazy D in the office. And he asked me, can I have this as my Christmas bonus? And I said, that's a year away, Crazy D. He goes, okay. These are getting fewer and farther between. It used to be 10, 15, even 20 years ago, I can remember when I was in my 20s that you could drive down the road and you would come across something like this and it was pretty decent driving by, but you don't anymore. And before someone snags this one up and stores it away in their storage or climate controlled storage, I wanted to give you guys a chance to take a look at it because these kind of cars, you don't just go driving around getting groceries in them. You take them out for a Sunday drive and you put it back in the climate controlled storage. I know we're not going to LS swap it. So I hope you guys enjoyed checking this thing over as much as I did. I love land yachts. That's one of the reasons I just bought my 420 SEL. I wanted the, the land yacht feel, but not the loosey-goosey steering, which these have. But some people love that. 
If you're curious what kind of tools we use in this shop, or especially the ones we're going to use to work on this one, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And before you go, hit the subscribe button because there's all kinds of cars in the shop. You just saw, we got tons of cars in the shop. Thanks for watching. Thank you.